A straight eight. The Eagles winning streak continues after a 12-point victory over the Giants in front of almost 28,000 fans at Optus Stadium. The biggest crowd of this crazy AFL season delivered a nerve-wracking ending as West Coast held off a persistent GWS outfit to complete their home run undefeated. West Coast remain fourth on the ladder but now prepare for their own footy frenzy. Five games in four weeks starting with Richmond in just four days on the Gold Coast. Welcome to this week's episode of Eagle Review. Proudly sponsored by Canards Hire. Count on Canards to make trade easy. Go in store or online. Canards.com.au Tyson Beattie, thanks for coming back yet again. Sir Doug Nichols round, always a very special occasion in the AFL and Optus Stadium and West Coast did a fantastic job. You were at the ground. Yeah, Stephen, it was a great acknowledgement uh, prior to the game and fantastic for us to get another victory in that wonderful Indigenous Guernsey. It is a ripper. I do like the look of it. Now, GWS, they were always going to come out raring after the disappointing and unexpected loss to the Sydney Swans, who were second last on the ladder at the time. They would have come out breathing fire and they're a quality team, TB, let's face it. But when the Eagles got that early lead and the Giants kept missing those shots midway through the game, the Eagles were able to weather the storm and hang on for a gutsy win. Well, Stephen, it was kind of a hard game to summarise, to be honest. I think in a lot of ways, Nick Natanui helped us set up to win the game and Jeremy McGovern helped us save the game with a lot of key individual and team moments in between, of course. But the Giants actually won most of the statistical categories uh, throughout the game, including disposals, clearances, a remarkable 57 more uncontested possessions, uh, contested possessions as well. It was quite a dominant statistical win in a lot of ways, but the only one that matters is the scoreboard, and that's not where they won on the weekend. That's right. And Nick Natanui coming back to his best, as you mentioned, in all Australian form, you'd have to think he's a fair shout in 2020. Too good for an ageing Shane Mumford on this occasion. 14 disposals, 13 of them contested, so not too much loose ball there for Nick Nat. Seven clearances, seven score involvements, just doing it by disposal in ruck. Up to 78% game time, TB, so you'd have to think... A lot of that had to do with Oscar Allen coming off the ground hurt, but good to see he could manage that kind of load. But I do want to talk about his first goal. He's kicked four this year, and all four seem to be very similar to this nature. Inside forward 50, almost a snap toward goal, creating something from nothing and just being super accurate. That's kind of what he's added to this game and made him even more deadly. Yeah, and he's also averaging 31 hitouts a game, which is actually third most in his career. Remarkable. Now, his last All-Australian, his only All-Australian was in 2012, eight years ago. That's a big gap between nods. I wonder if there's anyone else that might have had that bit of a gap between All-Australians. Maybe Sir Swamp Thing can help us out with Good that Good shout. One. Eight years is a long time. I can't see that happening too often, but we'd love to hear the fans out there if they have figured it out. Now, the other, obviously, key component of this victory or major influence was Jeremy McGovern, as we mentioned mm. at the start. He was remarkable. 18 disposals and eight intercepts. Mark Stumper. That amazing. is. I mean, that's a, a season record for 2020. He was plucking them from everywhere including this Mark of the Year contender with a fair bit of hang time. Did the same for Spoil of the Year. Good contender there. Only the true champions can miss four games with a hand injury and kind of come back and just not miss a beat. So clean in the air. Even just at ground level, he's picking it up and spinning as clean as you like. There's a reason why he's a four-time All-Australian CB, and that was on full display yesterday, particularly late in the game when it really mattered. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, coming off that thumb injury as well, such a brilliant performance. Also supported really well by Tom Barras and Brad Shepard uh, with a really talented GWS forward line, Jeremy Cameron and Toby Green back in there. Shep, we've talked about him a fair bit. He still hasn't got an All-Australian jumper, but hopefully this year could be the year. Thumper. I agree. Going forward, certainly making him more noticeable, maybe in the All-Australian selection's eyes. So a bit of tactics there from Shep. I like it. But some of those other younger defenders as well were really critical. Couldn't agree more. Cole had some massive moments, particularly early in the game. Stood up really well. Simo said post-game that both you know, he, Nelson, even Rotham, they are taking the next step right before our eyes. And talking about Joshy Rotham, fantastic game. 16 disposals at 88% efficiency. Using it real well in the back half. 11 marks, 5 of those intercepts. So really Gov overshadowed him to a certain degree because a few of those were very late in the game when it really mattered from Josh. Duggan returning, just added that bit of class and polish from the back half, very noticeable. Jared Brander, who came in was a couple of weeks ago. Was this his best game, you reckon? I would think so. I mean, 474 metres gained. He was moving the ball, you know, with a lot of depth and, and running all over the place. 16 disposals, five inside 50s and a few score assists, but just love what he did ball in hand. Yeah, some really good decision-making by Brander for sure. The Giants were missing Phil Davis through a knee injury. Nick Haynes then, 
Uh, obviously, he, he had a really good first quarter, some four intercept marks, but they were a little bit short all of a sudden. And Jack Darling had the opportunity to capitalise on that with three goals, two of them really important. This second one in the third term, when we're only 11 points up at the time, was really critical to steady the ship. Now, you've talked about uh, Darling a little bit, his form this year. He is down on the 2018 form. He's got career lows in marks and goals, but short in game time, of course. But this performance yesterday probably sets him up for now a good block of run over in the Queensland. Those home. two goals, they were fantastic contested marks. A bit of, you know, nous and strength combined. Just a great combination from Jack. Jamie Cripps assisted one of those. He had a terrific game on the weekend as well. So crafty. He had about four or five taps to advantage that were just not going to get picked up on the stat sheet, but very noticeable. Channeling is in a knick-knack there for a little bit. But this forward line, it seems that... When one doesn't fire, another does. So Josh Kennedy kicking bags earlier in this hub, uh, Optus Stadium hub. One goes down, one stands up, and was the case with, with Archie on the weekend as well. He had a sensational game. Nine disposals, five marks, and a couple of goals. This major at the Storica of three-quarter time was so important. And have a look, he's had no time to really measure that up. All instinct and nailed it. 14 pressure acts as well, so doing it offensively and defensively. He's moulding into having quite a season in 2020. Yeah, he was terrific, particularly this moment in the second term, bringing uh, the debutant into the game. He misses the mark initially, Archie, but then he follows up with this smother and then handball up to Xavier O'Neill, who, who bags the goal, his first goal in his first game, wearing the famous number 24, of course, John Worsfold. But Archie, brilliant work there. Always great to see them get around a first goal kicker. They come from all angles, so good to see. We talked about Oscar Allen a little bit earlier, so he spent some time on the sideline with an ankle injury. Let's hope he's going to be right after the short break. Richmond on the horizon. Also, Jackson Nelson copping this hit. Didn't brace for it, Simo said post-game. So the only serious injury on the night was to Callum Ward for the GWS Giants. If you're a bit squirmish, TB, Ooh, look this, away now. This is a shocker. That was a, fra a major fracture in his hand. Looks like salad fingers oh, there. It's no good. And let's, terrible. let's hope we see him play some footy in the back end of the year because... That is just gruesome as it gets. Perhaps like Ian Healy back in the day or Adam Gilchrist perhaps? Oh, the twisty fingers. <laughs> Every chance. So we move on to the Queensland hub. We've got four games happening in a very, very short uh, period of time. Richmond on Thursday night, massive test. The reigning premiers is going to be a big, big game. There's probably going to be some adjustment and some movement of, of players over this period. So it's going to be interesting to see how the, the team handles uh, the next month. I agree. No one uh, managed to this point in time, so it's on the horizon. Let's hope that injury list gets a bit healthier as we embark. It's time for the roast of the round now. We always got a good list going on here. Let's start it off with Jackson Nelson. Was on an island by himself. Very lonely place out there. Hitting the deck in front of 27,000 fans. Going to cost to a goal. Fortunately, Jake Riccardi in his debut had a good game but missed that shot. Now, Xavier O'Neill. Oh, you can't roast him in his first game. Just surely. a minor one. Just a little one. This one here was quite comical. If his life depended on getting this ball out, he's getting shot in the back shed with old Yeller because he was having no <laughs> effort. And the little wry smile at the end of the umpire saying, yeah, you got me there. A smile of acceptance, you uh, called it. I agree. I agree. Well. Now, Luke Shuey wasn't happy that you roasted him last week, so he's just decided to uh, throw the fend off back in there just to just to throw it back at you. That's, what, that's what this is about, mate. We put the fire under them. And they respond. We know they watch the show. That was a good one on Adam Kennedy. Uh, now, Jack Darling, now when we're running hot in the first term, he takes his mark here. 50 metre penalty. Now, is this three guys entering the protected area at once? It's a few, isn't it? It's wow. a tsunami of players. An orange tsunami, as they like to say. So roast the three of them, blanket roast. Now, Liam Ryan, I think he's still a bit dazed and confused from this massive hit to the head from Lockie Whitfield. No good there. Gov! doing the big man move, saying, you can't tackle me, little one. Ball, <laughs> well, he could, actually, but Gov, lucky to get a slipper on that, so avoiding a major roast. Well done, Gov. Now, let's go around the grounds and raise a Ray Chamberlain here, just backing up of a throw-up. Uh, over he goes. <laughs> Love great, an umpire stack, TV. Great humour. Now, later in the game, uh, Baker throwing the ball into his opponent's face. No free kick for this. No, the amount of free kicks I've given away at amateur footy for this and to not get paid at the top level, disgraceful, I think. <laughs> now, let's go to Tim Membry for the Saints. So, this one, in the opening minute, he's an absolute brain melt. How many goals is he trying to prevent from his teammate? There's one there on the goal line. Billing says, don't worry, Tim. I'll mop up your mess. No, you won't, because he's got in the way again. He's Too far. Peter Schmeichel there, the goalkeeping tactics by Tim Membry. Now, what about uh, Riley O'Brien? Now, surely this one that hits him right in the face, that must have been sun in the face. We'd right? have to, because he wouldn't be playing AFL level if not for the sun. So, yeah, we'll roast him still, though. Now, a little bit of a uh, social media graphic uh, problem here. Prominent in 2020 for us. It, it is, yes. Now, uh, luckless Gold Coast defender Rory Sloan suffered another ACL blow. 
Tupelo. Now, I don't think he'd been traded to the Suns and he hadn't done the injury. It's actually Rory Thompson from Gold Coast. Nah, it would have been a big mid-season move and good that he got up and played with an ACL on the weekend. So pretty gutsy stuff there from Rory. But going over to the Crows as well, have a look at this one. This is an interesting tactic. Exposing their butts at AFL level. <laughs> Perhaps that is going to be the key to their first win in 2020. Let's hope so. Now, you've got the winner, and I don't, I'm not sure about this winner because, I mean, he could be the future Lord Mayor of Perth and one of the great media men of Perth. Look, I'll share the roast with him because this is a week old and I forgot to put it in last week, but it's too good not to take it out. For those non-NBA fans out there, it's Giannis Antetokounmpo, won an MVP award, not a blow-in, serious player. Let's hear Basil have a crack at this. One of the NBA's biggest stars is in hot water on the eve of the playoffs. Giannis Antetokounmpo. Oh, wasn't me, Basil. 